My name is Jonathan Allen. Um, I want to introduce myself uh, to my blog and my personal uh, website. Uh, my personal website is supposed to be a place just where I can express myself in terms of my financial knowledge and my experience. Uh, it's for employers and investment professionals or anyone that likes finance. Um, so a little bit about my background. Uh, I am from Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, I graduated from UT Knoxville in 2017 with a degree in business management. In 2022, August of last year, I graduated from UT uh, Chattanooga uh, with a uh, MBA with a concentration in finance. Um, I started my investment, um, I guess, journey or <laughs> industry experience started in uh, August of 2019 at E-Trade. I was doing sales and customer service um, at a firm called E-Trade in Alpharetta, Georgia. Uh, shortly after the pandemic happened, um, I started my MBA summer of uh, 2020. Um, in between me starting my MBA and finishing, um, I worked at a firm called Healy Wealth Management. Uh, that firm was by far the best firm I've worked at so far. Uh, that's where I gained uh, the most knowledge and skills. Um, I worked under someone named John Healy. He was a CIO of the firm and a CFA um, charter holder. And, you know, working under John, I really got to um, better understand how equities are managed, how risk is managed, how cash is managed, how portfolio management works and, and, and the best ways to essentially manage risk within a portfolio. Um, typically, risk is managed, you know, 60, 40, 70, 30 with equity, fixed income split. And, and that works great and all. And, uh, you know, that's most of the time that's that's going to be, you know, your best option out there. Um, but there's another, you know, alternative uh, that I learned under him uh, called options hedging or um long puts or, or collars. Uh, essentially what we would do is we would uh, buy a put and we would uh, buy a certain number of contracts and hedge our equities um, with those contracts. Um, the strategy worked really good. Uh, for some accounts, we, we beat our benchmark target. Um, you know, it's uh, it can get kind of complicated with the puts um, so I, don't, I won't go too much into detail with it and bore, with, bore you with it. Um, but, you know, essentially the, the kind of portfolio you want to have um, when you're doing it the way we did it, right? I'm sure there's other ways you can do it. But doing it the way we did it is you want to have uh, an equity portfolio, which we had it was value-based. We want our equity portfolio to be as aggressive or not as aggressive as um, the underlying derivative that's that's hedging the portfolio, right? Because if it's too aggressive, let's say you used uh, highly concentrated or, or, or heavy, heavy growth um, managers or, or heavy growth stocks, right? And then you have a, a, uh, an S&P 500 uh, uh, long put, uh, contracts that are, that are hedging that, right? It, they're not. They're, there's going to be a tracking error. They're they're not going to match up um, exactly. So you know, if if this happened in 2022, you would have lost a lot of money because your equities would have been down a lot more um, than uh, you know the appreciation um, of, of of your uh, of your options essentially. Um, so you want to make sure essentially that you are, that the equities that you are using and the the hedge or the derivative that you're using, you want to make sure those closely match uh, one another. And that brings me to another thing I'm thinking about is Arkegos Capital Management, right? Um, they were a firm back in 2021 um, that uh, essentially went bankrupt. They lost uh, all their clients' money. Um, they were heavily concentrated in the, uh, the, the tech sector. Um, they were um, using margin. They were using borrowed money from these banks, from multiple uh, 
in institutions. And essentially, when the, when the tide went back out, when when equity started to fall, um, you know, he was uh, left high and dry, right? Um, he lost, I think, like ten billion dollars in two days. Um, but you know, I mean, that's there's a lot of that. I feel like not 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 to that degree, but the, some of these hedge funds out there are aren't managing the risk appropriately, right? Uh, some of these RAAs, uh, and not even the ones that, that manage institutional money, just some of the ones that manage, you know, retail everyday money, right? Um, I guess my definition of that would be five hundred thousand to ten million bucks, but uh, you know, everyone can have their own definition of it. Um, they do a better job of managing risk than these hedge funds, right? It, it's you know, some of these hedge funds, right? They, it's I read up on them. You could have all the the quant, all the quants, all the all the mathematical geniuses, um, all the people with tons of industry experience running these things, but a lot of them they, they have they haven't beaten the benchmark. They uh, they don't manage taxes well. Um, it, you know, essentially they're not to, to me for what they get charged and, and, and what what people pay them. Uh, they are not doing a good job. I just know with with. The strategy that me and John are using. Sometimes, honestly, I think just from talking to John and working under him, and then reading also. Sometimes simpler the bet simpler is better, right? You don't need all these mathematical formulas. And yeah, I'm some, I'm sure if, if you can return get great returns. I know there's a uh, firm. I don't know if they're still in business. Um, they're up in New York. Uh, they were run by mathematicians or something, but they they had the highest returns for like 30 years. I think it was like 33% or something. Um, you know, if you find someone like that, that's very smart and very capable, obviously put your money there. But a, a lot of these guys, I don't think they're, they're as uh, cracked up to be, um, or they're not, they're not as great as people might think they are, right? Sometimes your money is better is better left in a you know an average advisor or an RIA or, or, or someone that um, you know doesn't know all the mathematical stuff, but just traditional buy and hold equities, fixed income portfolio. Maybe that's the best for you. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I digress. The my, my point is that um, there's there's different ways to manage risk, right? Be aware of the manager you're hiring. Understand what their investment philosophy is, how they're how they're going to manage it. Um, if it's too complicated, right, you don't have to go with them. Right, you can go you can go use someone else. Um, but there there are alternatives out there, and I think using the options hedge is uh, a very good alternative if you can understand it or if it um, if, if it makes sense to you. Um, I, I think it's a better way to to manage money. In, in some aspects. Um, I'm going to go in, into a little bit about my philosophy on a value-based investment portfolio. Um, there's there's a lot of perks to that over growth. Um, one, value is not as dependent on high levels of growth. It's not as dependent on the interest rates. It's usually not as volatile. Uh, as we've seen, as interest rates have uh, gone up in 2022, um, as as the growth has slowed, as the economy is slowing down, uh, tech has absolutely gotten pummeled. Uh, the the tech sector, I mean, some of these names are down. Uh, I think seventy percent. I don't know that off the top of my head, but I've, I've been watching CNBC and I know they've been talking about it. Some some names are down. You know, they're they're cut in half. Right, Tesla's down a, a ton. Um, to me, when you're buying a, a growth stock, right? Um, I don't think all growth stocks are bad, but this is something you should be aware of. Like, if if revenue slows, if uh, if if these interest rates rise, um, these uh, the, these price to earnings ratios. I mean, they're, they're, some of these are going to get cut in half. I remember working with John, and he was actually uh, I posted this in my blog. But um, the Bill Ackman lemonade stand, right? John actually went through 
and made a whole, um, essentially an, an Excel file presentation for me. I'm, I'm not going to post this on my blog, um, but essentially um, he broke it down in a way that I could understand, right? Um, he was a great teacher. Um, and uh, essentially what he was showing me is what happens when revenue slows with these, with these growth companies, right? When, these, when revenue slows, when interest rates rise, when, when economic times get hard, there's a long way to fall, right? These, these, these price to earnings ratios, these, uh, these multiples get cut in half or more, right? And, and he showed me that, um, and I thought that was very eye-opening. Uh, and then we compared that to a maybe a value-based play. And with value, right, there, there's just, you know, if, if, you're, if you're doing your due diligence, right, and I talk about this in, in, on my website, my eight steps of doing due diligence when I'm purchasing a manager, my first four steps are getting to know the company, and my last four are really deciding, trying to decide, hey, you know, com comparing them with, uh, with other competitors, doing a discounted cash flow analysis, uh, taking into account my margin safety. Is this a company that I really want to purchase? Is this something I really want to add to my uh, portfolio of companies? Right. Um, and, and essentially with value is that you're, you're not going to get these huge swings in multiples. If, if, you, if you pay, if you don't overpay for a company, right? Um, in fact, when you when we had these market downturns, uh, talking to John about this, and I think maybe when Warren Buffett says, um, or I'm not sure about that, but I want I actually want the stock market on further, right? I, I want the stock market, I want these prices to go down further because it's cheaper for me. It means I can get more return in the long run, and, and, and I can go into that and, and how I calculate that in another uh, a video. Um, but essentially, there's just less risk involved in, in a value-based play. And, and over the 2010s, we've seen, you know, value has not uh, performed well compared to, compared to growth. But, you know, I think, you know, fundamentals matter again, right? I think in uh, 2000, uh, in, the, in the 2020s, I think we're gonna see value um, you know, be, be, be the big thing. I think value is going to, uh, out, outperform growth, um, in the twenties, as long as we have these interest rate increases, as long as, you know, um, inflation is a factor, I think value will be the better play over growth. Um, and also when it comes to trying to time the market and like knowing where it's going to go in next year, I, I don't try to do that. Right, I, like I, I posted something on my my blog about where the market's going in 20, 2023. I'll read that, but if I'm purchasing a business, right, I, I don't care where the market's going to go in the next twelve months. It, it doesn't matter to me. If I find a business I like, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to put it in part of my holdings, part of my portfolio, and I'm going to keep it because I like the business. I understand it, it has good fundamentals, uh, and the valuation's correct. Um. The only, only, you know, only reason you might want to understand where the market is going in the next twelve months is for clients, right? You want to be able to, you want to act knowledgeable. You want to be able to explain to them, you know, because they're going to ask, right? My dad asked me the other day, "Where's the market going?" Right? Because uh, I read the article, I was able to to give, uh, you know, a passable answer, I guess you could say. Um, but in all honesty, I don't really care where the market is going in the next twelve months. When I'm buying a business. It, you know, the price of the stock and where the stock market goes, that doesn't matter to me. It's because I know I have a great business and that's, um, you know, that's good enough for me. I don't need, uh, I'm not focused on price. Um, so yeah, I've gone into a little bit about uh, the value base, the fixed income versus options hedge. Um, I hope some of that made sense. Um, you can go to my my website, uh, JonathanAllenMBA.com, because uh, I'm going to post this on YouTube and then I'm going to upload it to my um, 
to my blog on here. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out. If you see anything on my website that doesn't make sense or is wrong, please reach out. Um, you know, I've only been in this industry for, for three or four years now, so it's possible I said something wrong or I, or I didn't write the right thing. Uh, I'm open to criticism. I'm open to correction. Um, again, my name is John Allen. Um, thank you and hope you have a great night. Bye.